Brought to you by Keep the Six Solid, and we keep in the six motherfucking solid. Oh, I'm your host, Lucas T. Dot, and we got another bang. Uh, make sure you ping some people in the room, share it on Twitter, all of that shit, um, and hit my back channel. Um, if you got a topic you think we should be discussing, or if you have any questions you want me to ask any of the guests, uh, I'll be checking that shit uh, periodically. Um, so. <sighs> So late last year, I just want to talk about something real quick. So late last year, um, Casper got released. Uh, shout out Casper, man. He got released after uh, serving a three-piece. Um, he touched, wrote on some positive shit. Uh, he talked about breaking bread and, you know, and talked down on the polys and was posting a lot of shit that we can all stand on, I feel like. You know, I had a long conversation with him and he was like really in a positive space, you know, staying out of trouble, spending time with his daughter um, and like making some really dope music and all of that. Um, so he was on parole and he was in the studio recording and he was dropping music. And this was all against his uh, parole officer's wishes, which at no time this should be a problem. But um then the day before New Year's Eve, he got locked up for a breach. Um, what the fuck, man? You know, uh, for trying to earn an honest living from music? Man, that shit's fucked up. So, I mean, free up Casper, man. Um, he called me last week and we had like a long conversation. And um, Keep Six Solid just posted his, uh, his new t-shirts, man. Free Casper. So everyone go link a free Casper shirt. Um, the, sh the link's up at the top there. Um... So yeah, man, and and shout out Casper, man. He's you know, he said he said he's coming home soon when I talked to him last week. So yeah, man, free him up. But yeah, let's get into it. We got a lot to unpack, man. It was an exciting week. Um, where's my man Ricochet? Is he in the building yet? There he is. What's popping, Ricochet? Yo, yo, yo. Can you hear me? Yeah, there you are. What's good, What's man? Happening? Happy you punching in, man. Um, I mean, first and foremost, I just want to salute you for the run that you had on, on 93.5, man, and keeping it all the fucking way real and all the artists you supported out of the city, especially like, you know, the independent artists who are on the come up on that grind, man. So salute to you, man. And so... I mean, I guess when one door closes, what's the saying? When one door closes, other doors open, man. So you got, crazy, doors open. You got a crazy <laughs> resume, bro. So, I mean, for, as far as I'm concerned, you can do whatever the fuck you want. So, I mean, what's the next step for uh, for Ricochet, man? I don't know, man. Like, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to rush into the next thing. You know what I mean? It's been like four or five years over there on radio. It's time to free up a little bit, get some freedom, make some moves. You know, like it's been, you see, the one thing about radio is like, it's satisfying and you know it's great to be uh able to like be an outlet for artists and whatnot but it's not it's not the craziest bread in the world you feel me and it takes time away from you getting to the bag however else you get to the bag so now it's time to focus on the bag a little bit more and then still do something for radio we'll see you know what i mean there's a couple options a couple things floating around but um i don't know it gotta be right like it gotta feel right i don't feel like there's a station really that's can fill the void and do it properly. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, in the city. Yeah, you're right. Right? And it's yeah, like, it's so crazy because a bunch of people have been hitting me and they're like, yo, why don't we open a radio? We should open a radio station even in the comments on the IG. Like, yo, we need to have our own radio station. But it's not that simple, bro. That's like I said, like you're putting up $30, $30 million, $20 million. And there might be better ways to put up that money. You feel me? Yeah. We yeah, had this it's conversation. Not, it's not that easy, yeah. man. It's, it's a lot yeah, easier to start a fucking podcast. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean. So, so we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. A couple of things. Maybe the, we, you know, we talked about the podcast thing. We talked about a few things. So we'll see what happens. All right, man. That's exciting, bro. Um, I, I mean, I seen this this tweet going around that, um, that maybe um, you know, attachments had some part of, you know, this this like, you know, the switch up in 935, you know, closing down shop. I mean, I did see a, a, a tweet from Peter Cash saying no cap. I mean, what are your thoughts? On that? I don't know. I don't think he meant it like that. I think he meant it like no. And then <laughs> cap. 
<laughs> you feel me? But it might have came up. It might have just come out the wrong way because let's look at the reality of that happening. You know what I mean? Like a station's not going to shut down shop because of a song being played. Right. You got to think about it. Flow is owned by Stingray. Stingray is a, a multinational company, right? Like a half a billion dollars. Like, this is a real big company. They own like a hundred radio stations. They're not finna shut it down because of one record. Right. So I guess like, you know, you were, you're in the mix there. I mean, what, what's been like, what's the conversation been like? What was the reason for that switch up? Well, I'll say this with the attachments thing, there is something to that record. Like, you know, there was a situation where they had to go back and like, go. Oh, this needs to be edited. You know what I mean? So the parts of the hook had to be edited and, and whatnot um, just out of respect or whatever the case may have been. So that was the case with that. But, um, uh, you know, other reasons, man, it's just like at the end of the day, radio is about making money, right? right. And radio is advertising. It's, it's driven by advertising. So advertisers got to want to spend money for the radio station to make money. So it doesn't matter what the radio station does. If advertisers are not coming to the table and being like, yo, we want to buy X, Y, Z amount of ads. And I'm not talking about, and I'm disrespect to like the small businesses, but it's not the small businesses, the restaurants, the whatever, hair salons that really, it's the national accounts, right? It's the Toyota, um, fucking Apple, Samsung, whatever the big accounts are. That's what drives radio. So now if the advertisers don't believe in hip hop, it doesn't matter how well the station's doing. You know what I mean? It's, it's the stations run by shares. So if you're a top six station, top seven station in Toronto, you could be doing that great. But if advertisers don't believe in the genre itself and maybe don't believe that the people listening are their target audience, that they're the people that's going to spend money, then you're dead in the water from the jump. Right, right. I mean, fuck, I was just in New York last week and, um, you know, I did a radio run with, with Peter Jackson, man. Shout out Peter Jackson. He's on a hell of a run. Um, and, we, you know, we pulled up to Power 105 and it's like, this is the number one, this is the number two radio station in the country. Right. You know, and it's like radio. And like he's saying, like, there's three, four million people listening live. Like this is, you know, and it's all fucking like greasy hip hop. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's like, I wonder why. I mean, obviously, New York's a way bigger place. But like, I'm just trying to understand like like what's missing in Toronto because obviously there's a lot of people who fuck with hip hop in Toronto. It's just a smaller market in general. Or right, it- but see that's the case, right? Like it's culture as well. Canadian culture and American culture is two different culture. Like it's not odd for like uh, somebody in their late fifties to be listening to hip hop in in New York City. Right. That might not be the case here. You feel me? Like we have such a, like, although we think it's just as big as a demographic as any of the other cities, evidently it's not. Right. Right. Because we would have more than one hip hop station. We would have more shit popping. We would be involved in all the, the, the ad campaigns. It would be repping the culture, which is still not doing that. So whatever research these companies are doing, the research is coming back and telling them that there's not enough people here to support that form or to sell to that demographic. Right. I'd, I'd like to see the stats on like Spotify and Apple, like what that divide is. Cause I feel like maybe that's part of it too. Right. Is that like a lot of people are just drawn for Spotify and Apple in Toronto. Right. I don't know. Right. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're under 25, for instance, you maybe never even came up on radio. Yeah. Like I very rarely flip on the radio, man. I got my playlist and like, I just right. set it, set it and forget it. It's easy. Same shit. Same, I'm, I'm fucking, I was on the radio. I wasn't really like, I'm not listening to the station that I work on. You know what I mean? Not all the time at least. Yeah, man, fuck those ads too, bro. Like I got, I pay my ten dollars a month, <laughs> and you know, there's no interruptions, there's no dumb shit. But I also said that was the difference between st- streaming and radio. Is radio is free. You feel me? Although streaming is too. But there's just something that a radio station in your city can offer, and it just has to be done the right way. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna speak on how flow was operated, how it wasn't operated, but I'm just saying a hip hop station can be ran the right way and possibly be successful here in the city. It just needs that right direction. Right. It got to be authentic to the culture. Let me just say that. Right. No, it makes sense, man. Makes sense. You feel me? And I could do whatever I could do on that station if I did to take over whatever it is. I can only bring so much to the table. At the end of the day, the bigger picture got to be authenticity to the, to the culture. And then maybe there's a way in, but that you're still looking at the advertisers. Like, are they going to support it or not? Right. So makes sense. No, it makes sense, man. Snoopy, what's good, man? I see you punching in. Yeah, yeah, just taking in everybody. Mine's like Snoopy. Outside. 
Uh, Since yeah. who being drawn for the radio? No, man. No, I'm good at that stuff. Snoopy's for the streets. No, man, I'm good for, I'm for the city, you know? It's for the city, is it? Yeah. Okay. You get me? The radio's too much work, man. I'm too ratchet. That was the same thing when I was in your shoes. When Ill Kids was on road, it was the same thing. Just too ratchet. But you never know. Maybe a time comes where you decide. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, man. Yeah. Tell me, Snoopy, what's going on in the, what's going on the road, man? What's happening? Shit's opening back up. What's the feeling out there? Um, same vibes. Man. Like I was always outside, you know. Everything's always open for me. You know, I just feel like parties are boring and stuff. You gotta leave the city. So we still on the underground party vibe, or we're popping back up? Um, both. So. Both clubs are opening. Luxies, her. Okay. We don't really got any clubs like that, anyways. No. This one, this, this, this took a hit. The club scene took a hit. It's back on the down. down. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Rick Shea, I had a quick question for you. Um, with the closing of 935, do you think that's investors looking at the overall demographic in the GTA? And them saying this is not worth uh, keeping the station open in an all hip hop sense, and them saying we need to pull this and make it a little bit more top forty and cater to the demographic in the actual GTA, and in, in in the sense of we're gonna ignore the need for hip hop in the city. That's that's their stance of the investors uh, when it came to shutting down the station. I just want to know your take on that. Thanks. Well, first of all, I can't speak on like investors. You feel me? Because like this is this wasn't an investor situation as far as I'm as far as I'm aware. This is Stingray as a company. But yeah, but, but exactly. But they have investors and they, they're, they're going to be like... Well, they, they have the stockholders. Yeah, they have the like, stockholders. Yeah, shareholders, yeah, shareholders and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, they're here to make money. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they have any invested interest in the culture or in hip-hop in general. They're a, a, a big corporation, so they're going to come down to the numbers. Mm. So, you know what I mean? If, if At the end of the day, if it's not performing like the rest of their stations or how they expect it, to perform, they have no duty to keep this thing going. Like, let's be honest. Do so they that's really... what I'm asking you. Was it? Was it? Was that the overall consensus uh, with shareholders? Are you under an NDA now, and you can't really answer that? No, I'm not. I'm not on the board of directors or anything. I'm not in those rooms to be having those conversations. But what I can take from it is, like, this station from the beginning, as much as like in its infancy when it started, it was it was very important to the city, to the culture, to the infrastructure. But it, in my opinion, from what I from what I see, it never seemed to be super profitable for whatever reason. And if it's not profitable, you're not exactly. going to stick around for something. You're going to go to something that you know advertisers are going to buy into. Again, this is just my take, right? Like, right, it's a business at the end of the day, right? It's a business. So you know, sometimes we're thinking like, oh, this so and so doesn't. Matter. Well, why would they? Mm, what what corporation do you know cares about hip hop? Mm. Or do they care about do they care about the bottom line? Is this making money or not making money? So I don't think there was any vested interest to push hip hop forward and make sure I think it was a vested interest to make sure that they can go back to their shareholders and say, This is what you know, we made this quarter. Mm, that, well, that's, what I'm, that, that's what I'm saying in the sense is we know I've worked at the radio station as well. Uh, the, the ads keep the station lights on. That's what runs the station, ads. And if the advertisers are not happy with how the station's going that could be a reason why this station has closed and that's why i was just following up with you if that might have been the reason yeah that's it that's what i think the reason would be if you ask me again just my opinion on the situation is just you know what i mean how profitable was the station could it be more profitable doing something else if the research comes back and say yes you can make although you might be making money doing this you know you might make money selling chevys but you might be able to make more money selling mercedes-benz so maybe you switch the product you're selling, and that's exactly what happened here, right? Now they're selling whatever the station is now. And it just, all, over the years, it never seemed to work out. It never, it's, how much time that station passed through different hands, different formats, name changes. It just seems that for whatever reason, that just never worked here in Toronto, as much as we want to think or believe it should work, which I believe it should work. I think there should be a, there's a place for hip hop radio in here. But again, I think it has to be done like authentically to the culture it has to be about hip hop and R&B for that to be that. Right. 
You know, there's other stations that offer culture, offer, you know, uh, perspective for the community and whatnot. But if we're talking about the Hot 97s, the the Power 105s, the, the 92 Reels, whatever it is, that's all about hip hop and R&B and it needs to be done authentically to the culture. Like, that's all I'm going to say about that. Fair enough. Thank you. Uh, PJ, what's good, man? Yo, what's poppin'? Bro, hell of a run, man. Congrats on the, the last week or so, man. It's been uh, it's been exciting. Yeah, Peter, can I, can I can I stop you for a second, Lucas? Let me give you your flowers, Peter, bro. I've known you for the better part of like a decade and a half, and you've done an amazing job at keeping the business going, keeping the bread coming in, staying relevant up to the times. So let me just like you know, Lucas always giving out the flowers. Let me give you your flowers on that because a lot of people yeah. don't know the hustle. We I've seen the hustle firsthand, and I gotta rate you for it, bro. Yeah, I think we toured. We toured together when I was like, yeah, probably like seventeen years old when you were touring with Belly. That, that was the bus. I think the bus, the bus, the rhymes tour, right? Yeah, that was me and my partner's tour at that time yeah. too. So that was like one of my first tours I ever got to go on, and one of the first tours I booked. But no, nah, definitely same ways, brother. You know, I appreciate you, respect you, all that shit. Uh, yeah, the video's going crazy, PJ. I just checked. About to crack, about to crack a half a mil. Yeah, video's doing well. Song's doing well on all the DSPs. And you guys are all sitting here talking about radio, but it's funny because, like, <laughs> I'm super focused on radio. So it's, like, it, it's crazy the the different views people have. But it's funny, too, because my view's, like, a super top 40. Like, I understand radio in Canada, and it, and it pisses me off. And it's really hard to crack. But top 40 in Canada is like the CHR shit is what matters. So it's like, you know, that's the thing I never understood about flow either is because at one time I know flow, flow was like the hot, hot syndicate. syndicate. So I know oh, it, it was it part was of hot, hot or whatever before. before. So you get like, the heck you know, trying to get on CHR radio is, is super important for this record for, you know, commercial records and, and all that kind of shit. So it's 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 really shitty to see that. And that's what always bothered me about Flow is they didn't report. They never reported your spins. You know, like the day that it played on, my new single played on um, Power 105. Like that shit gets reported so the Canadian stations can see that Power played it three times in a day. You know, so that kind of shit helps. So it's like, you know, I don't know. Radio is a bitch in this country, but it's like if you can crack it, it's, it's a different talk. But like, yo, PJ, like, I mean, this record here, this this Mount Valley record, um, this definitely has like more of like a, I would even categorize as potentially pop. Um, so like, when you were making this record, was that part of the thought process of like, man, let me let me go after radio and like put this pop record together? Was that like part of the school of thought there? I mean, I, I mean, at first, no, because at first it was something else. Like, at first it was a corporate thing, right? Like, there's a different version to that song that nobody's heard that was more like a corporate play that I said the last time we talked about. This song was worth seven figures to me before it dropped. So, you know, and that's 100%. So it's like, at first, nah, this was like a corporate thing that I just kind of did. And it was like a gift to somebody. And then they kind of saw the potential in it. And they were like, yo, turn this into like a record you can actually put out. And um, I knew I knew the vibe of the record was pop. I knew, you know, I had success with another pop record before. So, you know, I, I knew that that's what it was. But I mean, that's just the vibe of the record. So I knew that going after radio was super important to me. And it's like you know, it could be a two, three month process just to just to get it going. Like, I think Carl Wolf told me when Africa popped, it took him like six months. And then the record went number one on Billboard, you know. Crazy. So it's like it's a build. For sure. That was a big record. You know, I, I think a lot of people don't understand that and realize that, especially the way that music's being put out and consumed today is that sometimes, you, you know, you got to work your record. You got to stick with a record for a minute. Like you said, six months for a record to actually get going where it needs to be going. And I think a lot of people are not really with that thought process these days. What's what's making you want to stick that route and see it out? Like, what have you seen throughout your career that you can tell the young ones or whoever else is listening why that might have to be the case? I mean, when I had that record on a wave, on a wave, I think Virgin gave me um, Future Star with that record. So it went like heavy rotation on 15 stations like at once, right. which, you know, I couldn't even walk in the bank and do a wire transfer without hearing my own song. So I think 
you know, when you start hearing it like that and you start realizing like the power of radio outside of the demographic that we respect and like, you know, that's the thing is like, right. we don't think top 40 matters because we don't give a fuck, but that's not true. It's like, you know, I'm on tour and my daughter hears my record in the car on the way to school. Like these are the right. things we're not thinking of. Like that shit's huge. It's, you know, starting from scratch, calling, being like, yo, bro, it's on three stations at once right now. Like, you know, that shit is really, really big. And like the listenership for uh, Virgin or Kiss or uh, Chum, like their listenership is way bigger than whatever hip hop stations we've ever had. So, you know, it's just bigger, but in a really different way because it's like, you know, the 16 year olds, 17, 18 year olds, they're not really tapped in per se on that shit, but the viewership is crazy on that stuff. So, you know, on a wave, one record to me is worth more than my whole catalog. Like literally crazy. Right. So radio, radio ain't dead. Not completely. No, no, I don't think, I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon. Right. Like I said, though, it's definitely going to evolve, right? Yeah. Fuck, you see that um that Kanye stem player shit? This guy did 2.2 million on release day. Took the Is that the move 100%. going forward? Is that the move to take away the power from the DSPs? 100% in the bag. Right. Crazy. And then Snoop, same shit. Like, he just dropped this NFT project album did he sold over eight thousand fucking nfts in the first four days bro 44 million what up so what do you see happening what do you see what do you how do you see this playing out and changing the landscape because we've heard a lot about this for the last year or so i mean there's been examples in the past where like for instance wu-tang selling uh just the only copy of their album to someone how do you see this changing things up million dollars right yeah it was mark shirley Martin Shkreli, yeah. Where's that album now? Somebody else had it, and I think they... Um... It's still in his possession, actually. It's still in the next... Well, exactly. Man, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they confiscated it. The yeah, I heard that shit got confiscated. And, yeah, and by the FBI, color. exactly. What's the value of that album? Has it gone up? You'd have to think so, no? So right. what I saw recently, actually, on Vlad, these... um. These holders called something the DAO, some DAO, they bought it. They now own it. And they're planning on a way to release it to people where they can listen to it at no charge. Yeah, that's the shit I heard. I heard that, yeah, that those dudes took it over. They got the rights to it and they yeah. can do whatever the fuck they want with it. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, they paid a big bag. They had that on the TV show Billions the other day. That shit probably cost an arm. Yeah, real shit. So what are you saying, Lucas? How do you think this this changes the landscape going forward, let's say, uh, you know, a year from now? It's hard to say, man. I think, you know, there's still a massive space, obviously, on DSPs where, like, you need that, that playlist support to, like, you know, be discovered on, you know? Um, but is think, that the case know, where you work the DSPs to get to a spot where you're like, all right, now I can release my own shit and yeah. do that? Yeah. Yeah, I think once, you're like, copies, you know, once you have a massive fan base and you're an established artist, like, you know, you're fucking touring stadiums, it's kind of automatic, right? It seems that way. At least the platform's now there for, you know, artists to do those plays and, you know, they're going to make more money. I, I think the reach, you know, gets decreased a bit because they're not being discovered, you know? Like a lot less people listen to Kanye's album, for example, you know? I mean, he secured the bag, but like right. the reach, you know, is decreased now. Like if he dropped that shit on Spotify, it would have went crazy. You know, it's kind of crazy because if you think Kanye, does he need that extra bag? Like, how much money did you say he made off that off the like release? Two point two million uh, uh, opening opening day or whatever. All right, so two point two million dollars. Now, when it comes to Kanye, does he need that two point two million dollars, or is the art reaching as much people as possible the move before the money? Yeah. Right? I, think the, I think I think the bigger conversation to be had is that he turned down a hundred M's in order to make that first two point two. So it's like. It's a numbers game now. Is that was that move worth that hundred M turn down over like to own that forever? I think it's like the bigger conversation, you know? Right. Well, mm. it's one way to push a fucking a new device. It's one way to push it, man. You attach an album to it, and you know that's going to continue to sell. I mean, do you know anybody who picked up one of those stem players? I, I don't. 
Do you? I don't. Nah. No, no I don't. I've seen some videos. It looked kind of cool, but like, yeah. So does it ever go to a DSPs or it's uh, you know permanently on that? that That's a good question, man. I don't know. He's going to hold it off there as long as he can, I'm sure, just to keep running up those sales and those stem players because he's keeping 100% of the bag. So it's not a bad idea, right? Like you start off with some sort of an external player or a source and then you move into a playlist or DSPs gradually. Right. Maybe drop it later. Yeah. So like, make both bags. I mean, so like the two or three weeks leading up to this stem player, this album dropping, he was going crazy on IG. I mean, this motherfucker trended over the Super Bowl on Super Bowl Sunday. Um, he's doing he's doing the most. And like now the, the album's out. Does he do you think he cools off? Or I mean, was that part of the album rollout? Like, I don't know, man. What do you think? Who knows with him, man? Really, you can't call it, right? Like we've never seen anything consistent enough with his behavior to be like, we know what's next. <laughs> He's a fucking what the fuck bro. is going on? Like he's changing the rules as he goes, bro. He's making up his own rules. Yeah, facts. Big facts, man. Well, shout out Kanye, man. He moving different. He in his own lane. Uh, what else happened this fucking week, man? Top five is back in Toronto. We got transported back. Um, I'm looking forward to another three way call from him. Punching in. <laughs> What else happened this week? 